Welcome to the Mustard Seed Media Video Podcast. My name is Bob, and this is the podcast for Drupal web designers. Before we get into to today's podcast, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit just about this video podcast. Over the last few months, we've been trying our darndest to uh, make this podcast something we could do very frequently. And it has finally, I think, gotten the best of us. Uh, we had the chip in uh, thing going on for a little while, and we can't tell you how much we appreciated the support on that. Uh, but we're throwing this final uh, video podcast out for no chip in, just to make up for all the generous people that uh, did throw money at this podcast to try and keep it alive. Now, it sounds like it's going away forever. Hopefully, it is not going away forever, but it is going away for uh, the foreseeable future. Uh, so hopefully we're going to obviously leave all of the old po uh, podcasts online. So hopefully they can continue to help you. Uh, you can point people there and get them going on Drupal. But for now, we are going on a hiatus for an indetermined amount of time. Uh, so that's it. Hopefully this last video podcast for now is quite helpful and we do appreciate your support. Um, what we're going to talk about today is something I've gotten lots of questions about it is triggers and actions in Drupal. Both of these went into core for Drupal 6. They used to be sort of breakout modules, uh, contrib modules that did all of the same stuff, but now they are in core. So I'm going to show you how to use triggers and actions module in a very basic way. A lot of really, really powerful stuff can be done if you're a developer for Drupal because triggers and actions is really intended for developers to be able to enable and write new triggers and new actions uh, through their modules. If you're just a Drupal user or, or a themer or something else, you kind of have to make use of triggers and actions that somebody else has already written for you. And I'm going to show you how to use some of the base triggers and actions to do a couple of things. But if you're a Drupal developer, I'm going to show you a couple of links that will help you get started on writing your own triggers and actions. So let's dive in and look at triggers and actions in Drupal. First thing I want to point you to is this page that lays out what are triggers and actions in Drupal, uh, specifically Drupal 6. It's at drupal.org slash node slash 199.254. And it will give you a good overview of triggers and actions. There is a video that accompanies it. I'm going to take it... Uh, away from the, the videos uh, pretty much uh, really in depth on how to do a lot of this stuff. I'm going to show you some quick examples of how to do it in a very short amount of time, hopefully. But this is very good for uh, much more information than I'm going to give you here today. If you are a developer, as I mentioned, uh, writing triggers and writing actions in Drupal um, is something that developers, that, that is set up so developers can add new triggers and actions. And let me pause for a second and just give you an idea of what triggers and actions are, since I didn't do that right at the beginning. As a non-developer, I think of triggers and actions as cause and effect. So to me, call them cause and effect module. I don't really care. Uh, triggers and actions are something that developers know as a uh, something that happens in development. Uh, they should be very familiar with that. But for us non-developers, triggers and actions are really like cause and effect. So a trigger is when something happens in Drupal, it fires a trigger. So let's say a new node is published. That's a trigger. A new comment is added. That's a trigger. You can come up with all of these different triggers that happen that can trigger an event that can make something happen. And like I said, those triggers need to either be provided by core, provided by a contrib module, or written on your own in your own module. Uh, actions, as you would expect, are the effect of that trigger. So um, an action happens uh, is the result of a trigger. So let's say, and what I'm going to show today is, uh, let's say a new comment is added to your website and you want it to notify an administrator that a new comment is added. This is something we do a lot because we have sites where all comments need to be moderated. Uh, so a administrator needs to know that a new comment was added to the site. So the trigger is a new comment was added to the site. The action is send an email to the administrator and tell them a comment was added. Uh, so that's sort of what triggers and actions does. Think of it as cause and effect. Um, but if you're, again, if you're a developer, uh, you can write your own triggers. Here is a node. I'm going to link to all of these over at the Mustard Seed uh, Media Podcast page. Um, this is node 375.833, and it talks about writing triggers, how you actually use them. And the key to this is a Drupal hook called hook hook info, and you can find that over on api.drupal.org. And there is similar stuff for writing actions. Uh, writing actions is node 172.152, and it gives you all kinds of information on writing actions for Drupal to provide new actions. And the key there is hook action info, which you can find uh, over at drupal.org. So if you're a developer, make use of all of this stuff. Provide new awesome triggers and actions for us non-developers, and we will make use of them. 
So let's show you a quick example of using trigger and actions. Now, as I said, trigger and actions went into core in Drupal uh, 6, but actions isn't actually a module. You won't find it in your module list. It's just part of core. It's just there. Uh, the module you have to enable is the trigger module. So go ahead and enable the trigger module and save that. And what you'll get then is a new menu item uh, under site building called triggers. So let's go to that page. Uh, and we the, the thing you want to notice is up at the top in the tabs here, uh, you're going to have a couple different kinds of triggers. You'll have comment triggers, content triggers. You got can do stuff with cron and taxonomy and users. Uh, these are all just separated so you can see what type of stuff you're working on. So let's do the example that I was talking about uh, earlier. So we want to have a trigger that happens. Um, and so we have a couple of these triggers defined. Trigger, after saving new comment, after saving updated comment, after deleting a comment. These are three triggers for um, your comments on your site. But to use a new trigger, you'll, you can see here in our example, we want to send an email to somebody when a new comment is added. That is not available as an action. This drop down is which actions can I assign to that trigger? So instead, I need to go to the action settings page and make a new action available. Now, there are some basic actions here that are happening uh, that are set up by default. And, but then there are also some other actions that are available that somebody has written uh, into core. And one of them is send email. So I'm going to create that action. And I want this to be an email that is sent for comment notification. So I'm going to just rename it comment notification email. And I'm going to send it to the site administrator. And I'm going to make the title, you have a new comment. Hey, admin, you have a new comment that needs to be moderated. You can find it at, and then of course, we want to insert the URL, the dynamic URL there. And you'll see down below here that triggers uses the token module um, and that these are tokens that will automatically insert the proper information. So I'm going to say you have a new comment at node URL. That should insert the uh, URL of the node that has the new comment. So I'm going to save that. And now you can see we have this new uh, comment uh, uh, action right here called comment notification email. And so if I go back to my triggers page, I can now assign that to a comment action. So I'll go to my comments. After saving a new comment, I want to send a comment notification email. I'm going to assign that and I am done. Now, when somebody adds a new comment, uh, the site administrator will get an email that says, hey, you've got a new uh, comment, go administer it. Of course, you in this situation, you'd want to set comments uh, so that they were all under moderation after they were posted and things like that, so they're not right on the site. But that gives you a very basic example of using triggers and actions. You set up a trigger to, to happen, so an event happens, that's your trigger, and then you set up an action, and that's what you want to happen after the trigger is triggered. Uh, to make this really useful, again, uh, look for modules that have triggers and actions that come along with them. If you're a developer, jump into the links that I uh, posted over there and make that uh, make, make us some new actions and triggers so we can all use them. And uh, hopefully it's something that could be helpful for you. Uh, that is it for now. Uh, jump over to mustardseedmedia.com slash podcast to see all of the podcasts that we have. And hopefully we will see you again in the near future. Thanks.